fall 2019, September 27th, we're doing this audio recording in our microbiology lab during open lab. So um, you might hear some folks talking or asking questions, and I will interrupt definitely to answer their questions, and it might be helpful for the lab exam. So folks, um, people have been asking how to prepare for the lab exam, and the um, our lab homework study guide packets were made specifically to help people get ready for the um, lab exam. So the topics covered in our homework study guide packets are the topics you're most likely to see on the lab exam. So I thought what I would do in a, a series of these um, audio recordings is just walk through the lab study guide packets and I'll offer some sample questions along the way and, and some um, answers to them. It won't be exhaustive, right, but just to give you an idea of what some of the questions might be like. So we start with um, safety, and of course safety is really important. So you recall in your um, in your lab study guide, um, there was vocabulary. Um, you want to review what are opportunistic pathogens, and again, those that's what we work with in our lab. Um, the microbes we work with have really low virulence, but if they're given the special opportunity to um, invade a host. For example, if the host defenses are lowered, they can cause disease. Um, and another um, uh, term we want to know are compromised hosts. Those, so those are hosts, in this case humans, whose defenses are lowered. So you want to review what would cause folks' defenses to be lowered. So any cut to the skin or the mucous membranes, um, that's your skin is like your major defense frontline defense against microbes, likewise your mucous membranes. So um, surgery, accidents, burns, anything like that would definitely increase your risk for infection. We said that um, folks that are perhaps undergoing cancer therapy, chemo radiation therapy, are immunocompromised. Folks on long-term steroid therapy, steroids um, suppress the immune system. The really old and the really young are going to be at higher risk. Um, uh, pregnant women will be at higher risk. Um, anybody on immunosuppressive therapy, say for some chronic inflammatory disease or on um, immunosuppressive therapy for autoimmune diseases, they're all going to be at higher risk for infection. They, they would be considered compromised hosts. Um, additional vocabulary ampl amplification is when we're going to increase the number of our microbes, and that's what we do in our lab. We're always feeding and nurturing our microbes trying to get them to grow and divide. And the concern there is that we may exceed the infectious dose, which is the number of microbes required to overwhelm a host defenses and cause disease. Um, this one's really important, as you guys remember, when we're working with uh, growing our microbes in screw cap tubes, what's really important is we always loosen the tube. The, we loosen the screw cap so the gases can vent, so the tubes won't explode. We always loosen the caps before we put our cultures in the incubators. If we're going to store the cultures in our lockers, we loosen the caps, and we're going to loosen the caps before we put the cultures in the kill area. Labels are really important. So your labels should always include the name of the microbe, um, your name, at the very least, the first initial and your full last name, the date, and your lab section. And the labels are always placed on the part of the container where the microbes are growing. So for example, in our um, uh, screw cap tubes, the label always goes on the glass portion, the glass body where the microbes are growing. On our auger plates, the labels always go on the bottom of the auger plate. Do go through the practice quiz again, folks, because um, these are like some typical questions that you might see some of these again, or um, related questions on the lab exam. Um, always good to know how to deal with a spill, because that's a really common accident we have in the lab, and also you want to uh, review the Bactian incinerator safety rules. And again, you guys, we've kind of kind of joked about it, but it actually doesn't hurt. Um, whenever there's a question on lab safety and, and you don't know the answer, just say, wash your hands, because washing your hands is always a good idea. So folks, now we're moving to um, Chapter 2, Unit 2, Lab Equipment and Media. So remember, one of the most important skills you're going to learn in the micro lab is sterile or aseptic technique, which are techniques used to prevent the introduction of unwanted microbes. Um, into our media or onto perhaps our instruments. Um, and if you're 
doing um, dental surgery or any type of surgery, you know you want your instruments to be um, sterilized. Here's some examples of some of the, the equipment and the media we'll be using in the lab. So um, A is an inoculating loop, and um, we're going to use the Bacti incinerator to, um, to heat, sterilize it. Um, here we have an auger plate, and remember folks that um, we never open the auger plates completely. We open them like clamshells. Um, don't put the microbes on the inside of the lid. There's no food there. We're going to um, transfer our microbes to the surface of the auger, which is in the bottom of the plate. After we finish the transfer, we're going to tape the lid to the bottom. We're going to invert it, turn it upside down, and remember the label goes on the bottom of the plate. This is um, a broth in a screw cap tube, so we want to remember to um, loosen the, the cap before we put it in the incubator. Um, broth will appear cloudy or turbid if microbes are present or if cells are present. So before inoculating a broth, you always shake it gently to make sure that it's transparent, that it's not cloudy or turbid. If it's cloudy or turbid, that suggests cells are present and the broth might be contaminated. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Okay, this next one, D, is an auger slant. And the auger slant has a relatively large surface area to grow our microbes aerobically. If we want to force them to grow anaerobically, we can stab the butt with our needle to force the microbes to grow anaerobically. And on the slant, they'll be growing aerobically. So it is important, you guys, that we know where the um, our... Um, Biohazard bins, autoclave bins are, they're at the ends of bench, benches one, two, and three. Um, our, the Tuesday, Thurs, Tuesday, Thursday, 37 degree Celsius in incubators in the back of the room as you're facing the windows, it's, it's in the back of the room to the right. And then our um, Monday, Wednesday, 37 degree incubator is located right next to the safety hood. Um, slide warmers are at the end of the benches. The kill area is as you're facing the windows in the rear of the lab in the left-hand corner, and it's labeled as a kill area. There are bins there for our, um, our broths and our slants and our deep. So remember, always loosen the caps. Take all the tape off. Autoclave room is right next door. And in the autoclave room, you guys, is where the safety shower is located. In the, in the front of the lab, um, as you're facing the windows, in the front of the lab to the left is a refrigerator freezer, and then our class 30, um, 30 degrees Celsius incubator. So remember, you guys, don't put your cultures in the refrigerator if you want them to grow, right? Low temperatures inhibit the growth of microbes. Um, if you want to incubate at 30, make sure you get them into the correct spot. There's a fire extinguisher, folks, right at the entrance. Um, as you're facing the, the windows, the fire extinguisher is in the front of the lab by the door on the right. And then we should have numerous um, fire water buckets available. And also there will be a fire blanket up front. This is an auger deep. So we use auger deeps to, um, to force our microbes to grow anaerobically. So, of course, we would use our needle. Turbidity, you guys, is just another name for cloudiness. And this is an indicator of cells being present in liquid broths. So aerobic is when we, air or molecular oxygen is present. So in a deep, the aerobic area is up here at the top. In a deep, the anaerobic portion would be down here in the butt. Um, the Petri dish is the container in which we pour our auger to make our auger plates. And remember, the label goes on the bottom. Um, the plates, the lids are taped to the bottoms, and they're inverted, turned upside down before we incubate them. And anytime we store the plates, you guys, we always store them inverted to prevent condensation of water on the lids. The inoculating loop and needles. Do remember the needle is used to do stabs when we want our microbes to grow anaerobically. Pasture pipettes are these really delicate um, glass pipettes. Um, we want to make sure we always dispose of them in the sharps container. 
luckily you guys now with our Bunsen burn we don't with our Bacti incinerators we're hardly ever going to use our Bunsen burners um, slide warmers again when you're making smears remember you want to dry your smear before you heat fix it so your cells won't boil and break open um, the metrics unit you guys chapter 3 unit 3 um, we had this practice metrics exam and remember the key for it is posted on our canvas site and I tried to put two or three other older metrics exam with their keys on the canvas site so that you can practice those okay on on the lab exam there will be some metrics it'll mostly be maybe converting from one metrics unit to another um, for example we might have you estimate the diameter of cells using the diameter of the field of view we might have you express your answer in millimeters, then micrometers, and then nanometers. That would be a kind of a classic metrics question. Oops, sorry, let me go back up here. All right. So now, folks, we're in Unit um, 5, Chapter 5, the microscope. So we always have a station, folks, where we'll have a, a microscope that's letter-labeled, so the parts will have letter labels on them, and then we'll have a series of questions. For example, um, what's the name of the part labeled A? Um, if you are using the part labeled B, what's total magnification? So remember you guys, total magnification is the ocular, which is usually 10x times the magnifying power of the objective. So we'll just pretend if this is the high dry lens, right, it magnifies 40-fold. So total magnification would be 10-fold times 40-fold, that's 100-fold. The maximum um, magnification for our light microscopes is when we use the oil immersion lens and the total magnification there is a thousand fold. We can see bacteria, but we usually can't see viruses. They're, they're too small. Usually we'd have to have an electron uh, microscope to see the viruses. So oculars here, the head, um, the arm, rotating nose piece or turret are four objective lenses. And I think we have a table on the objective lenses, so we'll wait for that. This is the stage, um, course focus adjustment, we only use this with the, the scanning 4x and the low power 10x. Fine focus, you guys, when you're using the high dry 40x objective and the oil immersion 100x objective, only use fine focus. Okay. Um, we have um, stage clips, and we're lucky that we have mechanical stage, a mechanical stage um, uh, connected to the the slide clips and we'll have mechanical stage adjustment knobs so you can precisely move your slide over the surface of the stage. This is the stage where the action happens. There's a hole where the light will come through. Beneath the stage is a substage condenser. Um, if we want maximum resolution, for example, when we're looking at our uh, bacteria, we want to have the substage condensers raised all the way up to increase um, resolution. If we want to increase increased contrast, we would lower the substage condenser. Um, in addition, there's an iris diaphragm lever um, that's associated with the substage condenser. If we open up the iris diaphragm, that permits more light to strike our specimen, increasing resolution. If we're looking at wet mounts, where we don't have a lot of contrast, we actually want to decrease light, so we, we would close down the iris diaphragm here. Um, our base, the on-off switch here. There's usually um, a rheostat, a variable light control, and as we move from the lower power objectives, which have the diameter of the lens is quite large, we'll start at moderate light setting, maybe five, but then as we increase the magnifying power of the objectives, the diameter of the objective gets smaller, so we have a problem, you know, getting enough light to strike our retina. So as you work your way up to oil immersion, you want to increase the variable light control up to number 10 maximum. If you're using the oil immersion lens, again, you guys are probably looking at bacteria, you need maximum resolution. So you'd be working at the highest light setting, 10. You're going to open your iris diaphragm, make sure the substage condenser is raised all the way up. That's to increase resolution. And you're going to do the opposite to increase contrast. So you want less light, so you lower the substage condenser, close down the iris diaphragm, and cut back on your light. In addition, when you're using the oil immersion lens, remember we have to use the special immersion oil, and it has to um, fill the airspace between the specimen, your glass slide, and the end of the oil immersion um, um, 
lends itself and this is to decrease light refraction, the bending of light, and thus we're going to increase resolution. Remember we only use lens paper to clean our lenses, never use chem wipes or Kleenex or paper towels because we'll scratch the um, optical coating. So you guys, I think that's about um, 10 minutes. So let me, let me stop this one here. I want to see if I can answer questions for the folks in Open Lab. And then part two will continue with part two of the uh, microscope unit. We'll, we'll look at this table um, with magnifications and very importantly, the diameter field of view. Okay.